All right, what is going on, my lovely and wonderful individuals of the world? It has been a decent amount of time since we last spoke. What is going on? We are closing in on the month of February, which shall mark the release of the future of fighting games. The game that shall propel the FGC to the forefront of esports. We will overtake League of Legends, Dota 2, StarCraft, Heroes of the Storm, any other such popular activities that garner millions of viewers, hundreds of thousands of dollars in the prize pool, massive arenas filled with cheering fans. And of course, I speak of the game that releases the very early February of 2016, Nitro Plus Blasters Heroines. <sighs> can a single, just one, can one anime game come out? Just one. I'm only asking for one that does not have a fucking ridiculous title. I guess Marvel vs. Capcom. We got Marvel vs. Capcom. Fuck it. That is an anime game. I don't care what y'all say. It's an anime game. I don't care what y'all say. I know a bunch of people argue against it, but it is an anime game. Fact! Capcom has made numerous animes surrounding the Street Fighter world. Actually, one of the very few first and Actually, probably the very first anime. Well, no, Pokemon. So one of the very first animes I ever saw was the Street Fighter 2 movie. It's actually, a, I, I still like it. I own that movie. I saw it on sale at a blockbuster. Rest in peace. Uh, and I bought it, and I still own it, and shit, I will watch that at some point in time in the future, probably, because I actually enjoy that movie. Uh, facts! Marvel is, like, it's so anime. Comics are basically anime, let's be real. Uh, plus, they actually, they've made an X-Men anime, an official one. I haven't watched it myself, but I've heard good things about it. I do need to watch it at some point in time. But anyway, Marvel's Capcom's an anime game. We're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about... We're not here to talk about Nitro Plus Blasters either. I have no idea what that game entails. I don't know anything about system mechanics. I don't know anything about characters. I would not even know that that game exists were it not for one of you lovely people who asked me in a comment, like, hey, are you going to play this game? And I was like, what the fuck is that? Let me check Gamefly. Does Gamefly have it? Yes. Alrighty then. I'll try out that game. But here's the problem. Poor old Nate boy doesn't get to play the game on stick. God damn it. I thought I was going to have a PS3 slash PS4 compatible stick in the tournament edition. St is it standard? I actually don't know what TES Plus stands for. I was going to buy the sh the new Shadow Loose stick from Mad Cats. Because for those of you that are not aware, there was recently a thing they dubbed the Mad Cats Cup in San Francisco. It took place over Wednesday and Thursday. Had various exhibitions. Basically, it was just a, you know, showcasing of the new Mad Cats products in conjunction with Street Fighter V. Early, uh, you know, kind of release, not not a release party, but kind of just, you know, a hype party, hyping up the game, etc., etc. There were a bunch of different people there from the NorCal tournament scene. Uh, Mark Mann was there, etc., etc. And so I'm watching on Wednesday, and they're talking, and they're like, oh yeah, we actually have, er uh, we are selling these sticks early, the, these products early, I'm not sure if they were selling the uh, that new pad they have, whatever the hell it's called, but they were selling it early, and they're like, but we're also going to be here tomorrow, so please feel free to come out tomorrow, and so when they said they were selling it, I almost just jumped out of my seat and ran to my car to drive down to San Francisco in that moment, but then they were like, hey, we're, we're going to be here tomorrow too, so I was like, all right, cool, I'll just go tomorrow, so I go, uh, I sit around, I play some games, I fight some people. I got there super early. So, like, I was one of probably, like, ten people that were in the venue at the start. So, I got a lot of good games in. Uh, and then I saw Mark, man. So, I approached him. I was like, hey, what's up, man? Uh, I don't really see anything around that really looks like uh, something you would go to to purchase products. Are you guys selling sticks today? Oh, no, nah, man. We're not doing that today. Sorry. That was like 75% of the reason I went was to get a goddamn stick, Markman. You ruined my day. My day was ruined. I got so sad. And then the thought entered my mind. I'm here, right? Like, I've talked about it before. I'm a big dude. Uh, None of the other people 
in that venue. Well, Alex Myers is actually decently tall. But he's not a threatening dude. I could have taken one of those sticks and just walked out. I'm pretty sure. I could have just left. I could have just taken it and gone. I should have. That's right. I'm going to do that next time. I'm going to be the thief of the FGC. I'm going to become Robin Hood. Stealing from the rich to give to the poor. Because Mad Cats almost went bankrupt. <laughs> I read a story about that, actually. Like, I don't I'm just bullshitting right now. Because I don't, I don't know why. Because I'm weird. Um... But yeah, I heard that uh, Mad Cats was stating, like, because they threw themselves behind the peripherals for Rock Band 4, I think. I'm not sure if it was Rock Band or the new Guitar Hero, because one of them came, both of them came out. But I read a story where, so, like, a representative of the company was like, yeah, if this fails, we're fucked. <laughs> we invested a lot in this whole thing, so if this does not go well, we might die. Uh, so yeah, Mad Cats is not exactly the rich. But anyway, we're not here to talk about that shit. We are here. I, I did get to play with it. I got to play with the ch uh, the Chun-Li stick, the TES 2 Plus, and the Shadowloo stick. I, I fucking loved the Shadowloo stick. The TES Plus version was amazing, wonderful. I actually was not big on the TES 2. I Or the, is it just the TE2? I think it is just the TE2. Uh, it felt unnecessarily bulky. And again, when you're looking at me... If something feels unnecessarily bulky and cumbersome to me, chances are it's going to be worse for the average person. But, I mean, I don't know. You know, maybe that's just a personal preference that I didn't really like it. I just felt like because it kind of has that, I don't know. Who gives a shit? I prefer the TES Plus. Just putting that out there. However, it was fucking wonderful to be able to uh, play Street Fighter V on a stick and not have to play on a goddamn pad. I was actually able to do everything I was trying to do. I didn't miss any hit, I mean, like, I didn't miss my execution of any hit confirms, you know, any issues that arose while I was playing the game were on me and not on my controller, and that is fantastic to know, like, alright, these are my specific flaws that I need to work on and I need to overcome versus, I just can't do this shit on a D-pad, and that's just how it is, <laughs> so, that was a nice feeling to finally, but like I said, I got, uh, plenty of games in, I got to play a bunch of people, Showed off my Chun-Li a little bit. Mr. Justin Wong. I may have given him some tech accidentally. Because <laughs> I was uh, I was playing and I got a stun on somebody. And if some of you watched the previous uh, one of the Chun-Li videos. I don't know which one it was. But I showed off how I figured out you could link a crouching medium kick off of her EX Kikosho. Um, Kikoken, sorry. Kikosho is the ultra version. Kikoken. Her EX Fireball, if you space it correctly, and so I figured out that uh, you get perfect spacing if you do jumping heavy punch into back heavy punch, EX Fireball, crouching medium kick, and then into whatever special move. Uh, you can do spinning bird kick, you can do EX legs, whatever. Um, I did that combo, and Justin Wong happened to be watching at the time, so you're welcome, world, for me potentially giving him new tech to use. All right. Um... But yeah, I mean, it was super fun. I got to see Mr. Rin Harasaki. Not his real name, but I don't know if he wants me to advertise his real name. For those of you that do not know who that man is, shame on you. Unless you're like, you've just come in in the past couple of years. Because he used to be the dude that ran the BB vlog, which was basically what handled almost all of NorCal's Blaze Blue footage. Uh, that channel is what made me aware of the NorCal Blaze Blue tournament scene. It got me into the tournament scene. It also gave me my first shot at commentary. So, I am very personally attached to the BB Vlog, and Monsieur Rin Harasaki is an awesome dude. It was super great to see him again, and that kind of got me over the disappointments. I got to see that dude. Like, it was all worth it. Fuck it. I didn't go home with a stick. My Mad Cats bag that I came with, hoping to fill it up, returned home empty. But that's okay, because we, we got to see him. It was totally worth it. I introduced myself to Spooky. The only other person I knew in that entire venue was Hanzo Gonzo. There were like 200 people roaming around. The only one, aside from a very brief conversation at like the beginning of Vanilla Marvel, I uh, talked to Filipino champ like way the fuck back when, but there's no way he would remember me. Uh, the only people that I ever had like any decent amount of kind of like conversation, just being around in general, Hanzo Gonzo and Rin. Like that was, that was it. I didn't know anybody else that was there. Um... But yeah, so I stuck around, I played for a little while, I left kind of early, because the venue got very, very crowded, there were like 15 people to each setup trying to get in and play, it was almost impossible to maneuver around the venue without basically just shoulder tackling your way through, like it just, I, 
don't mind being around crowds, being around people. I quite enjoy it. But when it gets too crowded, which is generally kind of a problem when it comes to the FGC, because, like, you know, you got to mesh affordability with uh, the amount of space you have. And so sometimes shit get, just gets too crowded and you leave early. The same thing actually happened to me with a. There was a Persona 4 Arena Ultimax, like, release day events at, uh, what's the hell, what the hell is it called? God damn it, Game Center in San Francisco, and I went to that, and it was the same exact thing, man. Like, it just got so crowded that I was like, I don't want to be here anymore, I'm just gonna go. <laughs> and so the same thing happened. So I left kind of early, didn't get in as many games as I could have, but I had fun. Like I said, I got to play Street Fighter Five on stick, that was wonderful, got to talk to Combo Fiend for a little bit. Shit was nice. I enjoyed my time there, despite the fact that, again, I left with my hands empty, with my wallet full of the money that was supposed to be going toward the stick, and now I ain't got no stick. I gotta wait until February 16th, like the rest of you plebeians that don't have the NorCal scene just, you know, doing everything. Like, seriously, does anywhere, has anywhere, actually, I guess the UK... Because the UK has those winter stays on sessions that have been playing Street Fighter V like ev on a weekly basis for the past, what, like four or five months? <laughs> they are more privileged than NorCal, but anyway, enough of that. I don't really have anything else to say aside from that. I just, I'm so disappointed because I really wanted to have that stick. I could have been continuing to play Guilty Gear with it. I would have it for Nitro Plus Blasters, whatever the hell's going on in that game. Like I said, I don't know a goddamn thing about mechanics. I don't know anything about anything. But I would have had a stick and not had to play on pad. But now I get to play on pad, so goddamn it. So let's talk about Guilty Gear a little bit since I just mentioned it. I am done with Chip. Doesn't matter uh, about the stick. Once I get a stick, I am going to learn Sin. Fuck Chip. The reason being... If I was playing the game seriously, if I was planning on going to tournaments, attending majors, that kind of thing, Chip would be my dude. I would roll Chip, I would put my time into that character, and I would totally learn him. But uh, just playing on a casual online basis? That is not a character you can play casually. <laughs> it requires far too much effort, far too much focus, far too much attention. To properly play that character and execute with that character. And I want to just be sitting over here, relaxed, bullshitting around, and just doing some nonsense. And I can't do any of that with Chip. I have to be on point 100% of the time if I want to try and play that character. So, I decided that character is not for me after wasting all my time trying to learn him. You know, I do. Obviously, I don't have, you know, like a ton of different hit confirms. I don't have very solid neutral, I don't really have neutral at all right now, because I haven't really played matches against anybody, uh, but I still, you know, like, I learned all of his different mechanics, so that I could put them into play, once I, once I did start playing people, and then I played a few people, and, uh, that was when the decision was made, that it's just like, I cannot, <laughs> I do not want to play to the level of seriousness that is required to accurately play this character. Like, anybody, once you get to a certain level of effectiveness with a character, you can just sit back and bullshit with that character. I'm not saying it's, like, impossible to play Chip casually, but you need to take him very, very, very seriously to get to a level where you can just relax and kind of, I don't necessarily want to say autopilot, but close to it, to the point where you're very comfortable in just relying upon muscle memory, and just kind of general reactions to certain scenarios. I don't have time for that. I don't want to put in that amount of effort. So Sin is my dude, and I am going to learn that, homie. That's your update on Guilty Gear. I recently decided I was going to buy a PlayStation Portable. Let me tell you, I did not know how small that fucking thing was. Like, my, hand, my one hand, not, you know, both hands holding it or nothing, my one single hand is larger than the entire PSP. That thing is tiny as fuck. Like, the P I, it's actually the second PSP I bought. I'll get into that in a moment. But the PSP I bought came with, uh, shit, what's it called? Final Fantasy Tactics, whatever the subtitle is. I cannot actually read it. It's kind of difficult to read the text on the PSP screen. It feels like if any of you were, you know, early adopters of the Xbox 360, like myself, I bought, I didn't get a release release console, but I got like the first, I got it within about like a month and a half of its release. Um, 
And there were certain games, I think Dead Rising was the most infamous, Saints Row was pretty bad about it too, where they were designed for HD TVs, but that was a time, you know, it's not like now where you can just walk out and buy an HD TV for like $150, $200 easy. They were very expensive and fairly, so, I don't want to say rare because they weren't rare, but they were the kind of thing where it's like, this is a fairly new technology. It hasn't really been streamlined to the point where costs are reduced a bunch. So if you have an HD TV, chances are you're very well off in life. That was when I was a teenager. I was not very well off in life because obviously I'm too young to get a job. And my parents were not the type of parents that would just like, they could afford it. But they're not going to just go out and buy me an HD TV because I ask for it, right? Like, that would be something where I would basically have to say, that's like my birthday and Christmas gift all in one for the year, and I get nothing else. Like, that's kind of how the scenario was. So, I did not have an HD TV. Um, and text was basically, un Dead R again, Dead Rising was, pro I think, the worst that I was that I am aware of uh, back then in terms of having just a standard definition TV versus having an HD TV. Uh, it was not, it was almost impossible to read. It was very difficult. And that's kind of how it is on the PSP with this, uh, Final Fantasy Tactics. Like, I kind of started playing it, and I'm looking at the text, and I'm like, I have to basically hold this under a damn microscope if I want to read this shit. What the hell? The screen is so damn small. I was very, again, I was very surprised at the size of the PSP. But, uh, I almost purchased a pink one. I, Nate was almost rocking a coral pink PSP, because the best deal that I could find, you know, across Amazon, eBay, various other websites where you could find electronics and whatnot, the best deal I found was for a limited edition Hannah Montana version of the PSP, which apparently comes loaded with a Hannah Montana game, which I would have not played the shit out of. Let's be honest. But again, it was the best deal I could find. I don't care. Like, if I can save money on buying a pink something, I will do that happily. And I will rock that shit without any shame whatsoever. But then I found another one uh, listed for a similar price, but with uh, some additional stuff to it and, like, you know, a different kind of thing going on. And so I looked at it. I looked at the pictures and then I realized this is the same seller that's selling that first one. Supposedly a different listing, a different product. And yet, like, 60% of these pictures are exactly the same as the other listing. That's kind of shady. That seems like shenanigans. I no longer trust this dude. Let me find a different one. Uh, and so I did. I went and found a different one. And then I got it. And then I returned it. And I'm still waiting on the return money motherfucker might be trying to cheat me out i saw they had delivery confirmation three days ago where my money at we gonna have words son i got your address i will find you <laughs> but anyway um it had a scratch on across the screen which granted you know like it's not there they didn't specifically say there is a scratch on the screen it just said item has minor scratches which when i hear that personally when i'm looking at something like that i would think it would be on the case uh, it wouldn't be on the screen, but it was on the screen, and it was kind of like, it was long, it was thin, but it was very difficult to tell, aside from a specific lighting that kind of pops up a lot in games, or at a certain angle, when like the screen's turned off, or it has like a dull uh, background, so for instance, they were showing off that the PSP works with the, like kind of just load up page, whatever the hell it is, which kind of has a dim gray background, so I couldn't see the scratch, um, so I didn't know the scratch was on the screen, so that was one reason. The other reason was, every time, like, I basically barely even touched the back of the PSP, which is impossible for me not to do, given the size of it, it would, like, jostle the, uh, whatever, the cart, the thing that accepts the cartridges and reads it and whatnot, it would jostle it enough to the point where it's like, oh, you want to pop this open, so then it would ask me if, it w if I wanted to quit the game, and that is unacceptable to be having that happen basically every five seconds. So I sent it back. But anyway, let's check and see. Let's go see our email. Has a bitch responded? Because I know she got it. I put in, motherfucker, you got to sign for this. I have confirmation they signed for this. So where's my return? Nope, they still haven't handled it. I'm going to have to talk to them. I'm going to have to send them some shit. And I am going to have to threaten a negative review. That's right. Oh, I will go there. I will go there, people. Negative reviews will happen. And negative reviews from Nate Hurt. 
I aim for the soul, motherfucker. Alright, anyway. I probably won't. That's fu I'm far too lazy to bother with doing shit like that. What else do we want to talk about? Do we really want to talk about anything else? I have some stuff listed, but honestly, I'm not really sure if it's worth talking about. Um, no, yeah, there's really, there's really not, that's, that's basically all I got. Uh, like I said, I am going to be getting, uh, Nitro Plus Blasters Heroines. Hopefully I will be getting it at or near release from Gamefly. Uh, so yeah, I just, you know, cross my fingers, hope that I get it. And if not, then, then definitely when Street Fighter V comes around, it's just been really, there's been a lack of stuff from me because I don't really have anything to record, anything to play. Uh, so yeah, I'm just kind of chilling right now. Hopefully you're all doing well. Y'all are loving life, living it up as y'all deserve to be doing. And I am going to go ahead and cut this off and bail because I need something to drink. I'm thirsty, thirsty for so many things. But right now, liquid is at the top of the list. So I'm going to go get some of that. Thank you for listening as always. And I will talk to you later. Peace out.